This is IBM Event Automation, a new product we released last month to help our clients create event-driven solutions. We're seeing interest in event-driven architectures increase as businesses look to create responsive experiences that react to events as they occur and delight their customers. Event Automation aims to make that easier. The foundation is Event Streams, our event distribution component based on Apache Kafka. Events are everywhere nowadays. Some of these topics might be populated by creating a Kafka application, writing an application that produces events. But increasingly, the adoption of Kafka as an open de facto standard means all sorts of existing systems can emit events. So maybe when a new order is recorded in the order management system, that could be emitted as an event. Or when a customer record is created in the customer management system, perhaps that could have been emitted as an event. And for systems that can't natively emit Kafka events, IBM Event Automation provides a range of connectors that can capture events from key enterprise systems, surfacing them as events on Kafka topics. Our MQ connectors means that existing messaging flows can be used as another source of events. Or attaching a connector to a database, something that can capture change events from that database, means that any existing system built around a backend database could contribute to an event-driven solution. But collecting the events isn't enough. To be useful, businesses want to do something with them. But processing events in isolation isn't enough because you can't get insight from any individual event without context. Take this event, for example, an event that was emitted to capture an order that was made. I can see you know, the name of the customer who ordered it. I can see what it is that they ordered, how much they paid, when they ordered it, and so on. But that information by itself isn't enough. Was this order made by a customer immediately after they created their account? Well, just looking at this event by itself, I can't know. Does this order represent an increasing trend in the number of straight leg jeans being sold? Without looking at other orders in the same time window, I can't know. Is this order potentially suspicious? Was it part of a series of orders and other actions taken to try and manipulate or take advantage of some dynamic pricing algorithm? For any of these kinds of insights, context is key. So for this, event automation includes event processing, a low-code tool for creating event processing flows that let non-technical users get insight from these streams of events with the context of other events that occurred before and after them, correlating across multiple disparate streams of events. For example, that order that I was looking at before, was it made by a customer immediately after they created their account? By dragging on a stream of order events and a stream of new customer registration events and wiring them together, I can easily identify the orders made by new customers as they occur. Assistants guide the configuration of each of these nodes. For example, an assistant here, if I just clear this um, and show you what I did, it guided me to identify which properties these two streams of events have in common, what field I should use to correlate. Or this visual editor that let me define the time window that I'm interested in. So this visual editor here shows me that from when a new customer uh, registration event happens, I'm interested in orders that happen within a 30 minute window following that event. And I can try out my flow from the authoring tool, seeing the results here as I configure my flow. With just a few nodes, I've maybe made my first steps towards creating a new customer loyalty campaign, some responsive solution that guides me to reach out and contact a new customer after their first order in some delightful, context-sensitive way. But maybe this order event was the part of a trend. By dragging on a stream of order events, picking out the type of the product from the product description, and doing some time-based aggregation, tracking the number of units sold within each hour window, and then identifying which of those is the highest, by just wiring these kinds of steps together, I can identify which product has sold the most units in each hour. And again, I can test this out as I refine the flow. Maybe this is the start of driving a new dynamic section of my website for my online retail channel, something that can highlight the current trending product types, something that could help drive additional sales for those current hot items. But maybe that order 
was possibly suspicious. I can create a flow that looks for patterns of behavior that are possibly suspicious. Say that I have a dynamic pricing algorithm that responds to stock levels. Maybe I suspect that people are making large orders to influence the price and then later canceling them before they make a small order of what they actually want. So I can examine orders in the context of other orders of the same item and other actions like order cancellations. These kinds of real-time processing and analysis have traditionally been complex, requiring dedicated skills and complex technologies and tools. But as you've seen, we're putting the ability to extract insights from events in the hands of the non-technical business user. I've mentioned as I've gone through how these few simple flows could be used to drive value, but it's worth quickly going into how that could be done. This is where event automation again benefits from the ubiquity and the openness of Apache Kafka as a foundation, because the results of these event processing flows can be emitted as new streams of events on Kafka topics, and those Kafka topics can be used to trigger notifications, such as using something like AppConnect to prepare push notifications for the huge range of target systems that it supports. We can use it to trigger automations and business workflows, so that suspicious orders flow that I was showing you could be used to invoke a workflow for someone to investigate that potentially suspicious order in more detail, driving an immediate response and allowing actions to be taken as the order is made, instead of waiting for some end of week report. Before I finish, I want to introduce the third component of event automation. I talked at the start about how events can come from everywhere today. Dedicated Kafka apps, a huge and growing range of tools and systems that can emit events, and connectors that capture events from dozens of other backend systems, platforms, and infrastructure. We're enabling that world, a proliferation of events coming from a massive range of disparate systems. And the value of event processing only increases as you bring in more event sources, as you combine and correlate events from so many disparate sources. So to help with all of that, we have event endpoint management. With event endpoint management, businesses can create a self-service catalog for all of their streams of events. The starting point for all of those event processing flows I was showing before was discovering that those streams of events existed in the catalog. Seeing the documentation for where those events came from, seeing the schema of the data that describes the properties, uh, what each property means, what data type it is, and so on getting the connection information for how to get access to those events, creating myself credentials. The end-to-end -end for any of those projects can be just minutes from finding the topics to starting to bring them together and process them in event processing. So that is IBM Event Automation, enabling businesses to accelerate their event-driven projects with three components for building an event-driven architecture and rapidly getting value from the events in their existing systems.